Well, we're really thrilled to be here, to be part of this competition, and to be amongst all of you, and to really represent New Hampshire in building a new technology. Uh, the technology we're working on and what we're building is nanotechnology. Uh, we're a true New Hampshire uh, born and bred. Our uh, inventors, Dr. David Lashmore and Mr. Joseph Brown, uh, invented what we, uh, what we build our company on. We, they were a member of Bob Dean's Synergy Innovations from Lebanon uh, in the Upper Valley. Uh, the, the technology that came out in 2004 generated some statewide recognition in the Startup New Hampshire Business Plan competition, which enabled us to bridge into uh, new rounds of funding uh, led by CEI Community Ventures and Michael Garau, Army contracts, as well as a move to Concord in October, and most recently in November, recognition by NASA as one of the top nanotechnology firms in the country. So what is this nanotechnology? When you start looking at products, we're actually asking you to believe in products that you can't see with the naked eye. Uh, we're exploiting what is called carbon nanotubes. They're extraordinarily small carbon fibers. And on the right hand of the slide that you see over there is one of the structures. Kind of looks like chicken wire rolled up. And when I talk about extraordinarily small size, the size of these is the size of your DNA that's in your cells. That's the materials that we're engineering, and that's the materials we're building and using as a building block because of the three attributes you see here. They have extraordinary strength. They have incredibly light weight. They conduct electricity, and they conduct uh, temperature. Sounds almost like Star Trek's transparent aluminum. Uh, and they've been around, though, for, for 10 years. However, up until this time, uh, there's been a big limitation. They've yet to deliver on this promise because all the previous growth methods that have been there to date have made essentially a powder, very, very short carbon nanotubes. And like a powder, they're tough to work with. There are safety issues with powders for inhalation, and basically they've made inferior products. So there's been a lack of long nanotubes. There's also been a lack of being able to turn these things into a bulk material that you can use to make aircraft, golf clubs, skis, or other products. And that's really where we come in. We, uh, our technology is growing carbon nanotubes, as you see here, in the same manner as you would grow a high-tech textile fiber. So what's coming out from the left and moving to your right is what we affectionately call carbon candy. It's a cloud, it looks like smoke, and it's literally billions of these carbon nanotubes. There's so many of them, that's the only reason why you can see them. This forms the fundamental growth method for all of our processing. So for example, our nano yarns are made by winding these uh, nanomaterials. And if the, the, there we go. And if you see this film now, the materials are coming out from your right and moving down to the left and we're capturing these carbon materials, these carbon nanotubes, the carbon candy, with a special magnetic field that captures it in space, orients them as you can see it here as they go round and round, and then turns them into a yarn, something similar as you could see any textile material being woven or spun, and we spin them up onto a bobbin. Uh, this is actually a knockoff. We stole this, uh, this spinning wheel design from Leonardo da Vinci of uh, 1200, and it was perfected in New Hampshire in 1835. This basic process, though, when we grow, rather than capturing the materials and spinning them, and then you see here is making a nano felt, the same carbon nanotube material coming out of the reactor from your left and being captured on a moving belt. And that is how we make our felt. And I can't say that. I got through that one okay. Uh, belts of felts. That's really the fundamentals. These materials are what we're actually commercializing. We make them as essentially tapes in one format. And also the largest nanomaterials that ever been put down now, very wide felts. And this process here is about to be scaled up this year to uh, four foot, 10 foot, and 100 foot long uh, lengths. There's unprecedented amount of material here. Now just to prove to you that this isn't material we pulled out of the furnace, or out of the wood stove, I'm going to fly you down into one of our yarns. Now, if I have here a micrograph of a yarn that's about the size of what's holding the button onto my shirt here, I'm going to take you down into the nanotube material, and we start to get closer. And the higher magnification, you start to resolve the nanotube materials themselves. 
you begin to see some level of individual nanotubes, but actually not until you get down to this scale, now we're at sizes of DNA. So that yarn is literally composed, as are the felts, of trillions of these individual nanotube materials, and that's what we're making and commercializing. Now, the importance of this was recognized now in what we're doing to try to help our troops. Uh, this, this particular soldier, as you can see, is burdened down. It's an actual field shot with a significant weight. And if you even strip off that pack, you can imagine they're running around with their basic bulletproof vests, armor, helmets, with about three Thanksgiving turkey strapped on them. That's what they're running around being, uh, uh, being shot at with. And what we're working on with the Army and also with funding from the Navy is to create nano yarns and nano felts to save weight, to improve protection, and to involve with both body armor as well as you can imagine vehicle armor, etc. Now this fundamental process that we've developed for armor, which is a high volume process, creates then a materials platform that have extraordinarily broad applications. We're involved then with taking this out into a 21st century structural composites, but new types of batteries, alternative energy systems, electrical wires and shielding, as well as thermal protection and management. So fundamentally, we're using this basic platform, material platform, to create products of high performance that may ultimately be used as energy savings. In the case of the Iraq weather there, the arm is interested in energy savings for human energy, less effort to carry weight. That translates into the entire field of first responders and firemen, obviously, and in the world that some of us care about also, sporting goods. Uh, I'll get to drive further in the, into the woods with a better uh, nanotechnology golf club, but some of you might get down, the, down a hill faster on the skis after it snows. <coughs> Light and weight and high strain then to the bottom of this fuel conservation. So the entire area of transportation, whether it's military or civilian, and then clearly lightweight and high conductivity lends itself to what we're doing in energy utilization. Better batteries, alternative energy systems, antenna systems, etc. So here we have a basic textiles platform that, that kind of takes, takes us back to the future of New Hampshire. Because, because as we, we look, look at what, what we've done and where we've been, look at what we've done and where we've been, and what we're, we're looking at as far as our previous being the high-tech capital of the, uh, of the state, we're really trying to build a bridge to the future in which, uh, here we go, in which we're trying to take this technology out and not just be a new industry with great jobs across the whole family of products, as well as we hope we're leading a 21st century revolution for new technology here in the state. Thank you very much.